As we've been reporting this morning, 77 million is to be invested in making Britain's roads more cycle friendly. Well, The Times has been campaigning for cycling to be safer since one of its journalists was seriously, very seriously injured on her bike. Well, let's talk to Kaya Burgess from The Times, a new friend and colleague of, of Mary Bowers. And I, I, I guess, Kaya, that, that seeing what happened to Mary does bring it all home, that just how dangerous actually cycling, particularly in a city, can be. It, it certainly did. I mean, the one thing we've been trying to make clear with the campaign is that cycling generally is quite a safe thing to do. I mean, mm. it's, actually, it's actually a very safe way to get around. You're as likely to be injured by many other forms of transport. But, yeah, seeing a good friend and close colleague hurt in that way really brought it home to us that actually more needs to be done. When you look at the actual roads that the government and Boris Johnson are saying, everyone get out on your bikes, but there aren't the kind of facilities and the lanes there to, to keep people safe enough. And so for 77 million quid, what are we hoping to see? Well, hoping to see plans that have been made in London echoed around the country, really. There are some great plans in London to build segregated sort of two-way bike lanes along the embankment, for example, which, without causing too much difficulty for traffic, because cars are still important, will allow 1,000 people an hour to cycle up that road, for example. This allows some of that kind of idea, some of these new engineering ideas to be shared by Manchester, by Bristol. By... So, so is, is this a case of actually getting, where possible, the cycles off the road so that so the cars and cycles are actually in completely different areas, like you get in, in new towns like Welling Garden City, Milton Keynes, where th that you have the red routes? Yeah, that, that is the ideal. The ideal situation is to, to mix the two as, as little as possible. And that not only helps cyclists, obviously, because it's a safe environment, but it helps motorists in that it can reduce congestion if more people take to their bikes, it gets cyclists into their own space. It's not always possible, and there are so many other solutions, like having a short two-second green phase for cyclists to let them get ahead, which means life is easier for the drivers because they can see where they're going, for example. All these sorts of solutions need to be coming in. Because it is interesting. We are at a point in our in our history where cycling seems to be taking off more than we've ever seen it before because of the Olympics mm. and because of the, the Tour de France but also of course you know the, the sky rides and the other big cycle rides that are taking place up and down the country. People are really getting into this. They are. I think an important thing to realise is that as petrol prices increase, as train and tube fares increase, people are beginning to think that actually cycling is a, a really affordable, convenient, reliable way of getting around. It's not a hobby, it's just a way that kind of people choose to travel. And today's money is obviously great news, any money is welcome. But what needs to start happening finally is for there just to be an annual budget for cycling, rather than the occasional pots of money, which is obviously welcome. It's very hard for a city to plan ahead if it doesn't know if it's going to get two million quid here or five hundred thousand pounds there. If the government just says let's let's dedicate say two percent of the transport budget as an annual fund for cycle infrastructure, then they're going to go a long way to getting more people on their bikes. A feeling from some people this morning getting in touch that they're worried about the money being spent and it won't be used in the right way. Mick Parsons is saying our council's just spent millions on cycle tracks yesterday whilst travelling up the road. Two were on the track, eighteen on the road and another one here from Rudy saying what a waste of money all ride their bikes on pavements where he lives in Somerset worse than car drivers so a lot of people saying that actually the cyclists aren't always using the cycle yeah. tracks in the best way well the main problem has been that a lot of cycle tracks that exist at the moment are slightly bizarre in that sometimes you'll get a 200 meter stretch of cycle lane which will suddenly vanish before a roundabout or lead a cyclist into the middle lane and then vanish again and so a lot of the time, cyclists feel less safe using the cycle tracks. There's no excuse for riding on the pavement because you're not supposed to. But in some cases, it's like a safer option than suddenly being thrown onto a, an A road by a cycle lane that vanishes. So part of this is saying, not only let's put money into this, but let's do it properly. Let's share best practice and say, well, is this cycle lane useful where it is? Is there a better road it could be on? Does it connect up to other cycle lanes? And by providing much better facilities and cyclists will be able to use them much more confidently mm. and it helps drivers that the more people you have on their bikes the fewer cars on the road there are so it's joined up thinking thing. needed exactly. isn't it Kai great to talk to you thanks Thank very you. much indeed go you go going back on your bike now uh, well, it's quite a long way but uh, <laughs> not today <yeah. laughs> now stay with us here on sunrise coming up we're going to